How you doing, sir? Oh, just fine. How are you doing? I'm doing outstanding. Well, I've got a couple of questions for you to get started, so uh, we'll go uh, and we'll just uh, see how far we get with the questions. But uh, uh, we should be—it should be a good day. I think that uh, people are going to benefit from what's being said today, and we'll just uh, see where it goes. I'm with you. Wonderful. So the first question: What is desire? <laughs> it's something better. So I'm going to let you expound on that. <laughs> That's it. I mean, what 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 do you do if you're not desirous of something? Then you don't do nothing. You have to have a desire to move, to get up from one chair and move to another one. You have to think that something's better to move, and and that's all desire is. It's something better, and that's what you're to do. Change your mind, change your world. That's simple. And the first does the second. So the only thing you need to be concerned about is just choose this day wisely because you are doing so. And and not to choose, you know, that's to wind up being chosen for. And I that's rarely not not desirable. <laughs> and look, we were dreamed by God. Then God gave us dream the dream. So we're we're in control of our world if you recognize the fact that you are in control of your world. Thinking makes it so, as within, so without. It's a psychological drama. It's always up to you. I will do this. I won't do this. Change your mind. Change your world. You think that'll cover it? I think so. I think that we have a desire in a nutshell. And as you started off in speaking about desire, you said this is basically the cog that moves the world. And it's funny about desire. Even a child has to have a desire to want to stand and walk to move from a place of crawling to walking. Is that correct? Correct, correct. And you know what? Look at a child and you'll see what you lost. Because that's what happens. You see, a child, when a child wants to do something, you know he wants to do it. When he doesn't want to do something, he's very clear about that also. But you see, we're not that clear. You see, as we grow older and older, that expansion between, it expands and expands. There's a lot of space between I will and I won't. And that, that's where we come in. That, that's where we do our work. We be patient with ourselves. That, that, that's, that's your only work, really, is just to be patient with yourself. And to do so, go into silence. Sit down. Be quiet. Shut up. Listen. And you'll, you'll come away benefited, believe me. But you have to have patience with yourself. That, that, that's number one. If you can't handle that, then the rest of it just won't work. So you have to be patient with yourself. Set in the silence. That's where the magic is, in the silence. Be still and know that I'm God. If you've got something better to do, do it. <laughs> Being in the silence, this is uh, our theme pretty much each week, is getting people to go into the silence. And I don't think that people truly understand the benefit of going into the silence because I think that when you start thinking about meditation and so forth, I think that people think that it's an option. But if they're going to experience God within them, there's no way to do it apart from going into the silence. Would you agree? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. But you see, the thing of it is is that people really don't believe there's any benefits there to be had because they haven't been silent long enough to actually get a message. And you're supposed to get the message because you're supposed to know. You're given to know. But you have to be still to hear it. The small voice, the still small voice, it's always, it's always there, but it's never going to interfere with what you're doing. So you have to stop what you're doing to hear what it's doing for you. Get it? I do. I hope everybody did. So 
sometimes you don't get it on the first go around. Reiteration, reiteration. Somebody said recently, Linda seems to be talking about the same thing. And I told her, I said, listen, I said, he's going to keep talking about the same thing until we get it. Somebody went back through, and they went through and wrote down the different points of things that you covered. And they actually, in this particular talk, had 10 different talking points that you covered. And I think the person that had put the 10 talking points down, you say it week after week. Listen, this stuff is simple. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's simple. But you got to do the work. Now, many people say, well, he's saying the same thing, but many people are not willing to do anything different with their life. So sometimes it's needful to hear it over and over again until we begin practicing something as simple as going into the silence. Would you agree? That's it. You see, the thing of it is, is that people have not taken the time or the patience to sit long enough to actually feel what they're saying. 70,000 thoughts a day go through Mm -hmm. in one ear and out the other for the most part. But what you would attach yourself to, what what is coming through, that's what you're giving life to. Whatever you're paying attention to, you're giving life to. But it's your life you're giving to it. You see, what has your attention has your life. So it's wise to choose what you're paying attention to. You're talking to yourself continuously. About what? What what are you talking about to yourself? What are you listening to? What are you suggesting to yourself? See, that's not falling into the past. You see, I, I believed that for years. That was falling into the past. But you see, subconscious doesn't forget. It makes your world according to as you think, you feel, you are. That's it. So if you change your thinking, it says change your mind, change your world. That's you changing your mind. That's all there is to it. You don't have to do anything on the without. It's all within. It's a psychological drama. A play of humanity is just that. It's a virtual reality. It's out of the mind of man that everything... Well, look. Look around you. Everything around you had to be imagined. That's the magic of it all. Imagining creates the realness drama man. Play it to the hilt. You're given whatsoever to choose from. That should be wide enough. (laughs) Don't you think? Absolutely. Now, you know, it's funny. uh, We were talking about... uh reiteration, reiteration, repetition, repetition. For the last few nights, I've been listening to one of Neville's programs, and it's called the uh, Pruning Shears, the the vine, you know, speaking of the vine and the pruning shears and so forth. And uh, he speaks about a point in Scripture where Scripture says where either you stumble upon this rock or this rock will fall upon you and crush you, or you stumble upon it, and of course, you'll be fragmented. And so for me, I started meditating on the scripture, but also on his telling the message, as it were. And every time I listen to the message, I get something new. And when I put out a new broadcast, one of our talks, people are so excited. Now, it's true, many of the things may be said repeatedly, but they're not said in the same way. And that's our goal, of course, as you know, in our conversations, is to give a different twist on the message because we know that different people will hear that message differently. Uh, Would you agree? Actually, there's only one message. You're right. It's just one message. You are. Are what? That's the whole thing. As you think, you are. So if you know what you're thinking, you know what you're feeling, then that's what you are. And if you change what you're thinking and what you're feeling, then you change what you are. That, that, Like you said, it's simple. It's not easy, mm-hmm. but it is simple. <laughs> you know, and it's funny that you say that because even with it being a single message, for example, the message that went out most recently, you and I talked about forgiveness, for example. Now, sometimes people will send me a message and they say, well, what does Lindo think about blah, 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 and I 
come back, I said, I will ask him, but I said, the core message is going to be what you think you are. That's I it. said, but now, that's not going to stop me from asking him the question. I just want to prepare you beforehand that people are looking for something deep and profound, and they miss how deep and profound that message is. Would you agree? There's something else they're missing, too. That's just to remember to remember. That's it. You see, in other words, when you went to school, you know, and and you, you learned your spelling and your times tables and all of that, how'd you do that? How, how did you learn it? Reiteration, reiteration. And anything you want to remember, you have to remember it by reiterating it often. Otherwise, it just slips away. Look, I'm, I'm still on the point of going to myself and saying, oh, are we on track here? See, because sometimes I'm not. And then you get back on track real fast. And the track is, I am that what your desire, dream, mission, goal is. That's what you want to think upon. Think upon things that are lovely and of good report. And I found that if you do that persistently, well, not all the time, but as persistently and consistently as you can, because I know I know we're not aware all the time. I'm very aware of that. <laughs> I'm sure you are too, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You said something just a second ago, and I want to go back to it. You said, you know, sometimes I find myself off track, you know, and what we do, because likewise with myself, if I'm not manifesting the results that I desire at any given moment, I'm off track. So once I see that, I have to ask myself, what is it that I want at this moment or from this moment on? And of course, then I begin acting according, thinking accordingly, responding accordingly to what it is that I desire, and I think a lot of folks miss that. They want something that's grand, for example, but they don't want to have grand thoughts. Would you agree? Yeah, that's it. That's it. it all you have to do is just look at your everydayness. If, if it's not pleasing to you, if you're not happy with it, well, you're given an out. You're told, change your mind, change your world. And the first does the second. So all you have to do is just be patient to wait for the answers you're looking for. They'll be coming to you. Actually, they are anyway. Well, actually, you're having revelations all the time, but you're just not aware of them. And, and that, that was the, the main part of the contemplation and meditation. And everybody's doing it. Don't make a big deal out of it. Everybody's contemplating. Everybody's meditating. Just probably fairly poorly, <laughs> but, but if it has focus so you can draw it together, the focus is really, really the point. What is it that you're thinking about generally most of the time? Is it lovely? Is it a good report? Well, then you know what your future is because you're making your future moment by moment. So do it wisely. Because it is so. It is the self pushed out into the world of experiencing. And we're told that the world on the without is all second hand. And you're the one who has the ideas. So your world is your self pushed out. Just check on what you're pushing out. And you can do that easy because it's your everydayness. <laughs> Going back to what we started the discussion off with is desire. And most of us think that when we're thinking about desire, and you, you said it, listen, we're, we're operating out of desire. It, it's the cog that makes the world go around. So, but most of us think that when we're thinking about desire, it's only the good thing. Whatever or whatsoever that we're giving our attention to, at that moment, that becomes the desire. Yes. Absolutely. And, and the thing of it is, is that well, it's just a thought. You see, thoughts are things. Sometimes it's difficult to make that connection. Thoughts are things. Everything that's around you here. I, I, I'm sitting here in the office. There must be thousands of items in here, but they all had to be imagined by somebody. <laughs> 